In our modern age, no one really knows for certain if the Great Pyramid originally had a capstone or not. There is no direct physical evidence which indicates if the Great Pyramid did or did not have a capstone. Many modern day researchers and authors are certain that the Great Pyramid did have a capstone. They are equally certain as to what this capstone was made of. Some say stone, others are certain it was gold or even electrum. Others contend the capstone was actually a large jewel or crystal. The proposed purposes of the capstone are as varied as the proposed material it was made of. Some say it had symbolic or religious significance, or that it was an important part of an alien beacon or weapon. Others contend with equal certainty that the Great Pyramid did not have a capstone. Generally, for religious reasons, they contend there was no capstone and the Great Pyramid was unfinished based on Bible verses. I don't know if the Great Pyramid did or did not have a capstone, but if it did, it is simply just another stone of this building. This video is about how the capstone was set in place, if there ever was one. The capstone, or sometimes called Pyramidian, would have been the same shape as the Great Pyramid itself. It probably weighed several tons. It may have had a protrusion on its bottom side that fit into a socket. Just like the other stones, the capstone would have traveled up the series of water locks built into the casing stones. But before we set the capstone in place, the upper levels of the Great Pyramid must be assembled. The issue that is readily apparent in assembling the upper levels of the Great Pyramid is that the pond becomes smaller and smaller and ultimately too small for the large boat crane used to move the rough cut interior stones off the barges and down into the pond. There are smaller boat pits around the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. This indicates there may have been smaller boat cranes used during the final stages of construction. Ultimately, in the final stages of construction, the pond would be too small to accommodate boat cranes. Based on research conducted by the Pharaoh's Pump Foundation, this author contends the original builders modified the construction method to allow the completion of the uppermost levels. The original builders created a temporary artificial wall to impound the pond instead of using the casing stones. This artificial wall was anchored into and supported by the casing stones. A notch built into the casing stones would anchor the bottom of a temporary wall to impound a pond. A large temporary enclosure would be built high up on the Great Pyramid. It would be securely supported by the notch built into the casing stones. There was a door in one wall which allowed the pond to receive stones on barges from the uppermost water lock. The top of the temporary wooden enclosure is made secure and strong enough to withstand the pressure of the water when this enclosure is filled. As construction continues, each level becomes progressively smaller and smaller. This requires another modification of the construction procedure. The interior stones are now set in place first for each level before the casing stones of that level. This is made possible because the temporary wooden enclosure is now impounding the pond instead of the casing stones. We'll move the upper supports out of the way. The construction process continues, but this temporary wooden enclosure impounds the pond instead of the casing stones.
The watertight door is shut, sealing the wooden enclosure from the uppermost water lock. Water enters the enclosure and the construction process continues. The placement of stones is still level by level, but the area near the uppermost water lock is left unfinished. This allows clearance for the stones on barges to enter from the water lock into the enclosure. Remember, it is now the temporary enclosure that impounds the water, not the casing stones. We'll remove one of the walls of the temporary enclosure and watch the process of moving stones up to the level being assembled. The stone laden barge enters the temporary enclosure from the water lock. The watertight door is shut and water is added to this enclosure lifting the barge up to the necessary height. The interior stones are set in place and then the casing stones are set in place level by level. The original builders were truly geniuses. Stones on barges move from the uppermost water lock and enter the enclosure. The watertight door is closed and water is added to the enclosure and the barge rises up through the unfinished area and up to the necessary height. The order of stone placement in these uppermost levels continues to be the interior stones for a level first and then the casing stones for that level. It is almost time to set the capstone in place. In preparing for the placement of the capstone, the last few stones are set in place. These stones are the stones that the capstone will rest on. A socket is made ready to receive the protrusion on the underside of the capstone. All is ready to set the capstone in place. The challenge is to move this pyramidion up over 450 feet higher than the Giza Plateau. Then move the multiple ton stone from the barge and finally setting this stone down so that the protrusion slides into the socket without damaging the capstone. How that is accomplished, as well as finishing the Great Pyramid, is the subject of the following video.